This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Visualization of the larynx and pharynx is an essential part of a complete head and neck examination. Although the location of these structures often precludes direct visualization, simple techniques can be used to evaluate these anatomic structures in the clinical setting. Indirect laryngoscopy can be performed with either a simple dental mirror or with a flexible fiber optic endoscope. These procedures can be performed on patients who are awake and cooperative and are usually well tolerated. Patients with symptoms such as chronic cough, dysphonia, chronic throat pain, dysphagia, voice changes, symptoms of aspiration should all undergo careful laryngoscopy. Patients who are at high risk for head and neck cancer, such as heavy smokers or alcohol users, may benefit from screening examinations. In particular, any patient with ear pain, hoarseness, or sore throat that lasts for longer than two weeks should have a complete laryngopharyngeal examination. Laryngoscopy is important for patients with a difficult airway and in the evaluation of patients with angioedema, epistaxis, cervicofacial trauma, strider, and suspected foreign body ingestion. There are few, if any, contraindications to performing laryngoscopy with the fiber optic nasal laryngoscope. However, laryngoscopy must be performed with great care in a patient with impending airway compromise, such as a patient with epiglottitis. Inadvertent trauma to the laryngopharynx may exacerbate swelling and precipitate respiratory arrest. Begin by gathering these supplies and equipment. You will need gloves, a nasal speculum, surgical lubricant, anti-fogging solution, decongestant spray such as 0.05 oxymetazoline or 0.1% phenylephrine, as well as an anesthetic spray such as 4% lidocaine. For fiber optic laryngoscopy, obtain a standard flexible nasal laryngoscope. The endoscope has a thumb dial control to permit the examiner to deflect the tip up or down. When rotated 90 degrees, this thumb dial also allows the examiner to turn corners and to maneuver from side to side. A wall suction setup with a Fraser tip catheter should also be available. For mirror laryngoscopy, you will need a curved dental mirror and an external light source. During laryngoscopy, the examiner should use protective eyewear to prevent exposure to bodily fluids in the event of a sudden sneeze or expectoration on the part of the patient. The patient should be seated opposite the examiner. Ask the patient to uncross his or her legs and lean gently forward. Ask the patient then to open the mouth widely and protrude the tongue. Warm the mirror to just above body temperature or coat the mirror with an anti-fogging solution. Next, gently grab the patient's anterior tongue with a sterile 4x4 cotton gauze pad. Ask the patient to take slow, deep breaths through the mouth. Pass the mirror into the patient's oropharynx without touching any mucosa, then slightly angle the mirror downwards. Visualize the mucosal surfaces of the oropharynx, larynx, and hypopharynx. Ask the patient to say E and observe the dynamic motion of the true vocal cords. E with mirror laryngoscopy, the image is inverted. In other words, the right vocal cord appears on the left side of the examiner's view on the mirror and vice versa. The anterior aspect of the larynx can be seen by asking the patients to say E in an even higher register. This fully visualizes the anterior commissure. The oropharyngeal vollecula and the piriform sinuses in the hypopharynx are also visualized and should be inspected for symmetry. Occasionally, patients may not tolerate this examination due to a prominent gag reflex, apprehension, or discomfort. In these instances, apply a mild topical anesthetic to the throat and reattempt the exam. However, sometimes the examination cannot be tolerated and flexible laryngoscopy should be performed. Prepare the patient by applying a decongestant and anesthetic to the nasal mucosa. Any delivery method, whether by atomized spray or plain syringe, is acceptable. Open the patient's nose with a nasal speculum and administer the medication. Ask the patient to hold his or her breath during spraying 
to avoid inhalation of the agents. Ascertain the patient's medical allergies and medical contraindications prior to the administration of any anesthetic or decongestant. Once the nose is adequately prepared, the procedure may begin. The patient is comfortably seated upright, again facing the examiner with his or her face at eye level. Place the tip of the laryngoscope into the nostril, advancing slowly lateral to the septum and medial to the inferior turbinate. Visualize the inferior meatus and follow along the inferior turbinate. Advance the scope into the nasopharynx. Visualize the eustachian tube orifice of the torus tuberius at the entrance laterally to the nasopharynx. Visualize the adenoid or central lymphoid tissue of Waldeyer's ring. Immediately posterior to the eustachian tube is a shallow depression called Rosenmuller's fossa. Because nasopharyngeal carcinoma may arise from these recesses, this part of the exam merits especially careful evaluation. Next, evaluate the posterior nasal septum and the nasopharyngeal aspect of the soft palate. Ask the patient to breathe through his or her nose as this will separate the palate from the posterior nasal wall and will allow passage of the scope into the oropharynx. Once here, a view from above shows a panoramic view of the oropharynx below. Next, we will examine the larynx. The true vocal cord should appear clean, white, and taut. Note throughout any mucosal color or superficial irregularities. While the patient is breathing deeply, the glottis should remain widely open with the vocal cords abducted. Usually some portion of the subglottic larynx can be seen. The anterior ring of the cricoid cartilage is often visible just below the true vocal cords. The laryngoscope should not be passed through the vocal cords since contact can elicit laryngospasm. Ask the patient to sniff or to inspire deeply through the nose. This causes maximal abduction of the cords, permitting optimal assessment of this important area. Ask the patient to say E or ah. In the normal patient, the vocal cords will adduct in the middle and come into contact along the entire length, allowing for a precise assessment. During human speech, a vibratory wave is formed as vocal cords produce sound. Stroboscopic illumination of the larynx can thus reveal subtle alterations of vocal fold vibration. Examine the following laryngeal structures. The epiglottis, the arytenoids, areopiglottic folds, the false vocal folds, the true vocal cords, and the subglottic region or cricoid shelf. Hypopharyngeal anatomy should be distinguished from that of the larynx and oropharynx. By directing the examiner's attention to the areopiglottic and pharyngoepiglottic folds, this area can be precisely and carefully evaluated. The paired piriform sinuses are visible on either side of the larynx. If the patient puffs out his or her cheeks and holds them, this will push the walls of the hypopharynx out to allow for an easier and more complete view. Rotate the head from one side, then to the other. For all portions of this exam, the endoscope is advanced as close to the tissue as possible without touching. Touching the tissue may elicit a prominent gag reflex. Flexible laryngoscopy permits only limited visualization of the subglottic larynx and cervical trachea. Other areas that are not well visualized by flexible endoscopy include the laryngeal ventricle, the piriform sinus apex, and the retrocricoid region. If the cause of the patient's symptoms is not elucidated or a subglottic abnormality is suspected, direct cervical tracheoscopy and bronchoscopy should be performed in the operating room. Aftercare following nasolaryngoscopy is minimal. The only instruction given to the patient is to avoid eating and drinking for one hour to prevent aspiration that could be potentially caused by reduced laryngopharyngeal sensation. This procedure is generally painless, and therefore no post-procedure analgesia is required. Here are some tips that will facilitate successful laryngoscopy. Give the patient a tissue prior to starting the procedure. Nasal instrumentation may elicit a tearing reflex or sneeze. Ask the patient not to swallow throughout the exam. 
If the endoscope becomes covered with secretions, it can be withdrawn and gently touched on the mucosa of the nasopharynx, which has diminished sensation. This maneuver will clear the lens and usually causes no discomfort. Evaluation of the larynx and pharynx is an important part of a complete physical examination. Laryngoscopy by mirror or flexible fiber optic exam can safely be performed in the adult and pediatric population for benign or malignant conditions. With the advent of multidisciplinary care for head and neck cancer, knowledge of laryngoscopy and laryngopharyngeal anatomy is important in an increasing number of medical specialties.